It is Thursday, February 23rd, 2023. You are listening to episode 97 of the Human Hope Podcast. My name is Carlos Enrique with Guerrero Guzman de Chibo Cabello. And I got one question for you. Y'all ready for this? Come on, come on. Hey. What is good, Human Hope Familia? We out here, 97. Oh my goodness. We're at 97. We're at episode 97. We're almost 100. What do we do, fam? What do we do at 100? Somebody tell me. Are we, uh, I mean, do we have to do something special. Especially, especially for those of you OGs that have been around since like day one. Sharon McMahon's governored episode, the very first one. Um, but we're here. 97. I just burped. If you watch, if you're watching on YouTube, I apologize. Um, man, I'm gonna start feeling all the feelings. Welcome to another episode. Today's episode, I'm I'm excited about. I'm excited about because it's not recorded yet. I mean, you know, like a lot of these conversations. Hang on. Hey, okay, we'll fade that down. Um, a lot of these conversations, obviously, like I, I pre-record the, uh, um, the interviews, and then I'll do the intro, um, right before we release it, and then I'll edit in the interviews, which is great. I mean, that way you can listen to a lot of different things. You can listen to a lot of different people. Um. And I can keep things current and relevant, but today's episode, like as I'm recording this, like I'm, I'm literally recording it. I, I hit record and I'm not going to stop till we're done, which means I am the guest. Now, when I say I am the guest, we're, we're going to learn today. Um, we're going to learn today. And this, this one feels, um, surprisingly necessary. Uh, and I'll get, I'll get to where, you know, I mean, obviously if you're playing this, you've, you've already seen what I've titled it. I don't even know what I've, what I'm going to title the podcast episode yet, because I don't know what I'm going to finish saying during this interview, but you already know, cause you're in the future, what I ended up titled it. But isn't that weird that, you know, the title, but as I'm recording it, I don't, oh, whoa, it's like the matrix. Wait, do I, I do I have a sound effect. No, no, that's not it. Yeah. Um, that is, that's, that's kind of blowing my mind right now. Not quite sure why. I also am recording this um, while I am using my TENS unit on my back because I injured my back. You want to ask, ask me how? Go ahead. Carlos, how'd you injure your back? Getting up. I mean, that's just kind of where I'm at in life. Before we get to the meat and potatoes of the conversation I want to have with you today, I do want to uh, go over a couple things that are very important. First things first. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for those of you that listened last week and hundreds of you filled out the survey. I did a survey last week because I wanted to get to know you a little bit better. I wanted to know what you want. And... <clears throat> The results were actually a little bit surprising to me. Can I, can I be honest with you? Um, it, it, which is why you should always ask the people that you're serving what they want. Because, you know, I was not, I did not know what you wanted. <laughs> I guess I was just guessing. Um, and I now have a team of people that are helping me do a lot of things in my life. One of them being the podcast, but a whole bunch of other things. And it was there under their recommendation that they were like, hey, do a survey. So can we do something for a second? Can we actually uh, go over the survey? And can I let you know what your fellow human hope, because, oh, you guys hear my dog? I, I guess my my son is home. Uh, your fellow human hope uh, listeners, um, you, normally you listen to this alone or in the car with, uh, I don't know, a kid uh, when you're dropping him off. Um, which I learned in the survey, there's a lot of, there's a lot of moms that are dropping their kids off listening to this. There's actually a lot of moms, not, not even moms. There's actually a lot of women listening to this podcast. Um, but here, here's the thing. First things first, I want to let you know that I said I was going to give an Amazon gift certificate and a 
signed copy of How to Human to one of you that filled out the listener survey. And drum roll, please. The winner of the, did I say it was a $50 gift certificate? Can somebody tell me? Uh, was it a hundred? Are you guys going to be like, it was $5,000. I think it was 50, but let me know. I can't remember. Um, the winner, drum roll, please. Oh, let me drum roll a whole bunch. Drum roll. Audrey Pelser. Audrey Pelser, little did you know when you were listening to last week's episode and you decided to click on the link that I said to click on and fill out the survey, you would be getting, my friend, a signed copy of How to Human, which adds approximately 1.7 cents to the worth of your book, uh, but also get some Amazon, some Amazon love money. I don't know what that means, love money, but I'm sending you Amazon money as well. Uh, and is Audrey at Audrey Joe 85 on Instagram. Audrey, I'm going to be emailing you. Someone from my team will be emailing you and we're going to get you your goodies. So thank you. Second thing, let's get into, let's get into who you are. Get ready? This is actually so cool. It's like, I really get to see my human hope family. Who are you? Let's just, let's get the first one out of the way. Gender. Okay. Um, 91.7 female. 8.3% male. Um, can y'all talk to me about how to get your husbands to listen to the podcast? Listen, I, I am, I'm equal opportunity here. And I mean, I don't want to be sexist, um, but let's get some of the men on this get game. Let's get them to care about some of this hopeful stuff. I'm just kidding. They don't even have to listen to any of this. My, my female human hope familia, you're the ones carrying the show. Thank you. Um, but let me know what I got to do. Is there something else? They will, do they want me to talk about something? Is there something that, that will benefit both, both the genders, somebody, anybody? I mean, let me know. Do I, do I need to, I don't know. Do I need to, I don't, I don't even want to say anything because if I say like, do I need to talk about this? Then I'm going to uh, ultimately get an email saying, well, you don't think women like that. And that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to be like, I mean, maybe this is actually I haven't studied like data from, from podcasts, but maybe mostly women listen to podcasts. I am grateful that 91.7% of you females, I'm glad that all of you are here. And to the 8.3% males, I see you. I see all you little carlitos. I see you caring about the things that I care about. Thanks for being here. That was interesting. Um, top states, fascinating. Michigan was the top state Michigan. What <laughs> in no way, shape or form did I expect that? And then Texas came in second. I see y'all Michigan and Texas. Look, I'm going to take this data. If we ever do a podcast tour, here we are, Michigan, Texas, California, third place, Illinois and Tennessee. Is it Illinois or Illinois, Illinois to tying for fourth. That's fascinating. I mean, is it Chicago? Who, who, who Illinois? What? Tennessee, obviously, but there we go. There's a time. And then we kind of go down Florida, Indiana. Makes sense. Ohio makes sense. You know, what doesn't Oregon, my Oregonians. I see you Pennsylvania. I mean, the, rounding out the top 10. So fascinating, right? Oh, I love this. I love data. Um, Age. Ooh, I like this one. So. Like it, it's actually like 18 to 20, uh, the under 18, really, there's just not a lot of you. 18 to 25, a tiny little sliver. The youths are probably listening to other podcasts, but the big chunk, 26 to 44. That is that, that's the largest chunk of my listeners. Uh, the largest being 35 to 44, second largest, 26 to 34. And then third is 40. Five to 54. Um, and then, I mean, listen, I got 17% or 55 and up. I see y'all. I'm catching up to you. I see y'all. Fascinating. I, I, this stuff is so fascinating. What else is interesting in this stuff? Um, marital status. Uh, we got, I mean, 75% married, 15% um, single. Uh, looks like maybe, oh, there's a little slip. Maybe, I don't know, maybe like 10% divorced. We got some widowed. We got, we got everybody here. I love you. I'm so glad that you're here. Um, 
Okay, but this is what I want to get to. So I'm kind of skipping through a couple of these here. Um, you guys would tell me your level of education, which best describes you. Oh, here's one. I mean, th this isn't surprising. This follows my Instagram, but um, wh when it comes to to race, we have white, African American, Asian. Prefer not to answer. And again, this is not ethnicity. This is race. We'll get into that in a little bit in the podcast. But 93% of my white friends and family are here to have conversations with the black guy. I, I could not be more proud. For some of you, I may be your only black friend. Um, and I'm glad to be that. I'm glad you're here. Um, but let's, let's get into some of these real quick. Going through. Um, come to find out. The majority of everybody listens is the most engaged during my little intro section when I'm talking and engagement falls off. Not everybody, but a lot of, you know, a lot of people will fall off. The majority of people that do fall off, fall off right after kind of my intro, uh, which is like, they're just kind of in for my talk, my chat. And then if I do an interview, it's like they decide at that point whether they're going to listen or not. That, that was actually fascinating information. What was that noise? Did you guys hear that? Um, what issues do you want Carlos to address? Fascinating right here. Ready? Parenting top human hope stories. Second place race and diversity tied for second faith. Third mental health, fourth place relationships or marriage. Fifth place deconstruction. Sixth place politics. Man, ain't nobody got time for that, but you know, I mean, I, I dabble, dabble in it. Interesting, right? If you were to do us, if Carlos were to do a series, what themes would you want to hear deep dive on parenting? I'm just so surprised at the parenting thing. This is kind of surprising. Mean, do you, do y'all know what a horrible dad I am? Have you seen all of the disasters of parenting? But no, I get, I, I, I get it. Like we, we have, we, we have, we have good kids, um, but which is not a direct result of my parenting, but we can get into that. Um, that's first place. So a lot of people wanting to do that. Faith comes in next. Interesting. Um, mental health, community, race, diversity, same. Um, what's been your favorite human hope show? Lots of you. And, and these are fill in the blanks. So um, everyone loves Heather. I, I mean, it, this is a problem for my wife because she hates being in the public eye, but sorry, babe. Overwhelming number is Heather. Sharon is second place. Amish love story. Third place. Uh, a lot of people, you like it when my kids are on the show. I could do more of that. Um, again, who's been your favorite guest, Heather, Sharon, black aunties, uh, John Eldridge surprise. A little surprised by that. A lot of John Eldridge fans. Um, and yeah, so I mean, th there's the data, there's the data that I'm kind of working off of. And there's a lot more questions that we asked, but I just want to let you know that like we, we heard you. And we're going to be adjusting things, you know, um, first and uh, another thing that, you know, I, I, I didn't, we didn't necessarily ask this, but we're kind of, I'm kind of gathering this from the data is I think I'm going to do more teachings like myself, like, like today, I'm going to do more where I just kind of take us through a learning and, um, it, it seems from the data that you like that. Now I know some of you guys may like interviews more. But it seems that most people um, w don't mind when it's just me. And I, I'll be honest with you, there, there's, um, I can fall into the trap of, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I, everyone else is doing interviews. Maybe I just need to do interviews. And so sometimes I'll just find interviews and stick them in because I think people want to hear interviews. But yeah, and then, you know, Heather was telling me on, on our, um, on our drive home from, oh, that's what it was. The noise was. My little tens here. I'm beeping. Um, my little tens unit. Um, I, I'm turning it back on. Heather was telling me on the way home from dinner tonight. She goes, you know, when I listen to John Eldridge's podcast, which she listens to John Eldridge's podcast a lot. Um, she goes, I I listen to his podcast for him. Like I want to listen to him. And I was like, oh, I guess that makes sense. He doesn't really interview people. Um, you know, like Emily P. Freeman, I was on her next right thing podcast. Uh, that's my favorite, my favorite podcast. Most of the time it's just her. And I like that. So I guess that it's funny there. The one question I didn't ask is just blatantly. What do you like more? Do you like me interviewing guests or do you just like me? And it's not like it'll turn into one or the other, but it lets me know and gives me confidence when I do some things. So 
Thank you for filling out the survey. And now you know who your family is, who your friends and your family are here on the Human Hope Podcast. Um, what else? Let's see. I gave the money away. I gave the book away. I talked about the survey. Let's, um, you know, we're in Black History Month and we're drawing to the end here. Um, and, I, you know, a couple episodes ago, I read a chapter. I'm not going to read today, FYI. Um, but I read a chapter on kind of my 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 story when it came to race. Um, but today on Instagram, I decided to share something that I've never shared before about something that I struggle with uh, as a black man in the South. And I uh, did not know what it would bring about in emotions for me. The So what I shared was this, like, like every day I walk out of my front door and I turn to the left and I sit on my, my patio, my porch. And I don't know, 30 yards from me are 12 Confederate flags waving in the winds, the wind, not the winds. And I, I just expressed today that, um, that's difficult for me. <laughs> when people ask me, Carlos, why do you, why do you talk about race so much? Um, well, every single day I walk out and I see these symbols that to me represent hate um, and represent racism. And now I know that there's some bias involved in this, completely admitting those things. But I also know that most of it is not bias. Most of it is based in reality, in my reality, in a lot of people's reality. And so I guess the, 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 as I was reading through a lot of the DMs, people were like shocked like a gasp that there could be 12 Confederate flags hang, flying um, in front of my face. Now, um, let me let me give you a little history of the the property, right? You're, you probably, guys are probably like, well, hello, Mr. How to Human Author. Why don't you go talk to him like you do? Why don't you go see humans, Carlos, and free humans? Well, because he's not alive, the owner of the property. It's actually uh, this sliver of land between the 65 freeway. Uh, did I just say the 65? Did I just California eyes myself? Did I just say the 65? Like I say the five, the 101, the 105, the 10. I did. I said the 65. And I have lived in Nashville, Tennessee since 2010. Going on 13 years. You can take the boy out of California, but you can't take California out of the boy. The property there's highway 65 and then there's this little sliver of grass. And then my, my neighbor, James with the black bunny, uh, his property and also another neighbor next to him. But in between James's backyard and 65, highway 65 is the sliver of grass where Nathan Bedford forest, who was the grandmaster of the Ku Klux Klan. They, there was a statue up, um, for him <laughs> and, you know, I was, I would, I, I couldn't see the statue. You could see it from the freeway, but I could see the flags. I, mean, I could kind of barely see the statue, like in the winter when the, but not like the flags, the flags you can see. So all that to say, there was a big, obviously 2020, 2021, there was a big to do. And finally the statue got removed, um, which was, I was just grateful that I didn't have to stare at the grand clan wizard of the KKK every day. That was great. But they left the flags up. And initially I was just grateful that, um, oh my God, I think I see a mosquito in February in my house. Oh, oh my gosh. What is wrong with the planet? Um, that is a mosquito. Oh my gosh. If that thing, if that thing bites me, I will, I'm so allergic to mosquitoes. Come on, go on over. Okay. Um, I'm just going to be thinking about the stupid mosquito now. The flag stayed up every, every day I walk out and I um, see the flags. And so I made a video today. I put it on Instagram going like, Hey, there's still work that needs to be done. Well, if it was 2020 or 2021 and I made that video, I would have expected a lot of debate in the comment section of that post. If it was 2020 or 2021, I would have expected a lot of DMs in my DMs about the post. I was shocked at 
the amount of people. Now, again, I don't know if these people follow me or not because the, the reel got shared a lot. Um, so a lot of people could have DM me that don't follow me, but I guess I was shocked that people that have followed me for this long would think it's a problem. Would wonder why it's a problem, I guess. And I was able to have some really good conversations with a lot of people today. But then I went to my comments and I just saw people arguing and fighting. And I I just was like, how are we still here? How, how are we still here? The work's not even close to being done. And I know we're tired. I know we're exhausted. Um, it, it, it took a lot for a lot of my friends that aren't black to lean into this conversation in 2020 and 2021. And I know it took a lot out of you, but I, I'm here to tell you it's, you're not, you're not even close to being done. Like we have a lot of work to do. Um, so I guess I'm just a little shocked and a little triggered that my comment section looked like 2020. I'm like, Oh my gosh. Oh, and I mean, to be honest with you, like I'm just, I'm bummed. I just thought, I, I just, I don't, I don't know what I thought. Um, and I almost cried. I just, we got work to do. So we're going to do some work today. I want to address two things today. First one is I want to talk to those people um, that may with a hundred percent authenticity and no judgment being passed on, on them at all may think that it's not a problem, the Confederate flag. And I, um, I want to unpack that a little bit. Uh, the second thing I want to do is I want to give, I want to give you those of you that want to have these conversations about race with family members, specifically race. We've talked about how to have crucial conversations before, but I want to give you uh, a little bit more constructive, a little bit better handlebars on how to have conversations about race with maybe some family members that don't think that race is a problem, that there's a racism problem in America. Um, that's, those are two things I want to do. I think I can do those in like 20 minutes. I think I can. Um, so this is what we're going to do. I mean, right. We're going right at it. Um, we're going to take a little uh, break to check in on some of our partners. And then right after that, uh, we're going to hop back in and do this thing. All right. Y'all ready? Let's, uh, let's get this. Uh, let's, let's get our fun partner music. Here we go. Oh no, that's not it. <laughs> I got my fancy little thing over here and I always hit the wrong button. Okay. Hold on. This podcast is partnered with athletic greens. Hey, all right. <laughs> Listen, uh, the number one most important thing in your life needs to be your health, right? I've talked about mental health a lot, but also your physical health because you can't have good mental health without good physical health. Our partner is Athletic Greens. And here's the thing. I take AG1, which is by Athletic Greens, literally every single day. I gave it a try because I wanted to help heal my gut health. Okay. I take it in the morning because I have my little travel back and you know, I drink my coffee. I take my AG1 with my water and I'm good. And let, let me tell you, it's so hard and it's been so hard for me to come up with like a true routine when it comes to this stuff. Um, but AG1 has made it so much easier easier so much easier okay ag1 is a is powerful because it's easy to fit into your lifestyle it's just one scoop of powder mixed with water once a day that is it okay every scoop is packed with 75 vitamins minerals and whole food source ingredients of the highest quality that give us major benefits like gut and mood support, boosted energy, and even healthier looking skin. This is what I want you to do. If you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens has given you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase of AG1. So go to athleticgreens.com slash human hope 
That's athleticgreens.com slash human hope and check it out. Also, this week, we are partnering with Haya. I always love talking about Haya just because I love to say their name. Okay, Haya. Haya is that children's vitamin that you actually want to give your kids because it's not loaded down with five grams of sugar and it's not going to contribute to a variety of health issues. I told you before, I'm going to tell you again, I actually have been taking Haya. I've been taking, listen, I got Athletic Greens I'm taking, I'm taking Haya, I'm taking all the stuff and it tastes amazing and it's so good. Formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies and then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins, minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and so much more. This is what I want you to do. We've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamins. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, you got to go to HayaHealth.com slash Human Hope. This deal is not available on the regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash Human Hope and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. One more partner. And that is going to be Zoc Doc. Have y'all done it yet? Have you done the Zoc Doc thing yet? Okay, you've been stewing about that thing, that health problem that you can't quite figure out. You're almost ready to go to the doctor, but you just don't know who to go to. ZocDoc is going to help you figure it out. Everything in the right place. It's all right there waiting for you. And, and here's the thing. There's nothing worse than going to a doctor's appointment and expecting to be the center of attention. And then your doctor just seems like, oh, listen, I got better things to do and better places to be. So instead of listening to you intently and asking you how you feel and helping you along, the doctor's checking on the clock. Listen, on ZocDoc, you're going to find quality doctors who focus on you, listen to you, and pro prioritize your care. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take insurance, your insurance, and are available when you need them to treat almost every condition under the sun. And listen, surprise twists may work, for a podcast, but they don't work for medical care. With ZocDoc, there's no alarms and no surprises. You get to choose from thousands of doctors and specialists. You can do it right now. Go to ZocDoc.com slash human hope and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That is crazy talk, but it's true. That's ZocDoc.com slash human hope. ZocDoc.com slash human hope. Now, Back to the show. I'm gonna fade out this uh fade out this music, but it's so good, huh? Hey, 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 it's just happy. I feel happy. Like when, when it was sponsor music time, I was like, I had to find good sponsor music. Um and we out. Okay. Thanks, ZocDoc. Thanks, Haya. Thanks, Athletic Greens. So let's do this. Let's, uh, let's address the elephant in the room. Let's address the triggering, the triggering question for me is, is what, well, first of all, we, we got to get to the, this point. Um, why is the Confederate flag so offensive? Cause it's offensive. So why, why in the world is it so offensive? Now I, I, I want you to remove the, well, Carlos, because it was, you know, it's racists use it. The KKK uses it. Well, yes, yes. But it was it was racist. There were pro it was problematic before the KKK got to it. It was problematic before racists started using it and planting it in people's front yards. It was problematic. So why is it so offensive? Because I, I need to let you know. I, see if I can let me see if I can find this. One of the um, uh, one of the direct messages that I got today read. Oh gosh, I should have been more prepared. Um, let's see here. I wonder if it's going to be seven hours. Nope. I want to read you this exact, um, this exact DM. And I don't know if it's going to load. 
But the gist of it, nope, here we go. Hang on. I'm getting there now. I'm getting there. I'm getting close. Um, getting closer. Here we go. Nope, that's not it. Getting closer. <laughs> no, I can't find it. Sorry. I, I really wanted to read it to you and I'm just not ready. Um, the gist was this, Carlos. Um, I, oh, oh, I, I took a screen capture of it. Thank, I'm so smart. Here it is, Carlos. I recognize your viewpoint. And again, my viewpoint being that um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not down with the Confederate flag <laughs> because as a black man, it's, it's, uh, it's just horrible to be down with. So Carlos, I recognize your viewpoint. I also know and understand this is part of history. It is important to carry the history forward. I get a lot of DMs about history when it comes to monuments and flags. Many of my black friends who don't like to be called African-American, not quite sure where that comes from, dislike when various statues and flags are taken down because someone is offended. Okay. Maybe you have some black friends like that. Um, I see both perspectives, but lean more toward the history of our country and defending as such. I appreciate you listening. And so I did. I listened. Um, and well, first of all, I want to say thank you to this person that um, knows that I was going to listen. I feel like I, I, if there's something I pride myself in is people knowing that I am going to listen to them and, and I'm going to learn and I may even change my mind about some things. Um, but my, my reply to them um, was, I wonder if I have that. My reply, oh, here we go. To them, I wonder if you're going to be able to hear this. Um, oh, do I have my, oh, maybe I do. Let's see here. Do I have my phone connected to my little soundboard? Because then you can hear what I said. Um, tech support. This is, this is on the fly. I told y'all we're doing this live. Okay. Um, output roadcaster pro. Let's see here. Let's see if, if my, let's see if my laptop works with this. This is going to be fascinating if this actually works. Um, let's, let's play this and see what happens. <gasps> Can you hear this? Oh my gosh, it's working. This is amazing. Okay. Um, but unfortunately, the video I want is not my laptop. This is my response. My response was, um, I, I understand about not erasing history, but I would actually say that we're not erasing history by taking monuments and flags down, right? Like, how is that erasing history? It's not. I, I think that we actually don't need to burn and destroy these things. We need to put them in museums because museums are great places to go and remember history. But as a black man, I don't want to have to get up every day and get traumatized by a flag that was weaponized against me um, my, my entire life. Now, the counter argument to that, people are going to say, well, Carlos, the United States flag has been weaponized. But I definitely would say that the Confederate flag was more a symbol of slavery as opposed to a symbol of freedom, right? Like, like it was, it was created because Abraham Lincoln um, became president and the Southern states seceded, 11 of the states seceded because they um, were scared that he was going to take away their rights to have slaves. So, so, you know, the, the, the glorified, beautified version of, of the story is like, well, no, it was about states' rights. That was what the Civil War was about. Well, yeah, but what was the right? What was the right they were fighting for? Yes, it was about the rights, but what was the right? It was slavery, right? And so that flag became uh, just a, a symbol for that. And we'll put it in a museum, but I don't want to have to see it every single day. Um, and also this, like for people that say this is just part of my heritage, like 
your the, the heritage of the flag. I and I understand it. There's a lot of beautiful things I said in the video today on Instagram about the South. I love that. I love fireflies, sweet tea, mint juleps, NASCAR, out of country music, all the things. But there's just because you love something doesn't mean that you don't want it to be better. And I feel like we're better than that flag. I I feel like we just are, and it's 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 hurtful. Let let me let me unpack why that flag. And so anyway, that that was my response to her. Um, and also I said, you know, I mean, imagine if in Germany they were they erected statues thirty years after the fact because that's when these monuments like that we tore down were erected after the Civil War. It wasn't they weren't created during the Civil War. Literally, these mon monuments that have been torn down were create were lifted up and you know. Um, 20 to 30 years after the civil war to paint a better picture about the civil war, right? After reconstruction. So imagine if 30 years after um, Germany lost the war, if they started erected statues of Adolf Hitler and suddenly Jews in 2023, if you're Jewish, you have to drive by the statue of Adolf Hitler, but people are like, no, we can't tear it down because it's erasing history. I really don't think anyone in their right mind would, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I don't want to assume anything, but, but would, would be like, yeah, yeah, no, keep the statue up. No. And so I guess, you know, people think, well, these people weren't as bad as Adolf Hitler. They just didn't know better. Um, you know, they were great upstanding Americans that have the statue, the people that fought in the civil war, you know, in the Confederacy, like they were, they just didn't know better. It still is a symbol of hate. It's, it still wounds. So put it in a museum. Let's learn about it. Let's not erase history. So that was kind of my, my, my uh, response to a few people today, but I do want to, I, I want to get a little bit more specific with the flag. Okay. So now understanding that after a decade of occupation in the South uh, during the reconstruction, um, the U S military withdrew their forces from these Confederate States. And that's when, you know, white landowners were able to go back to their land and they, um, implemented all of these like unjust labor systems, um, you know, violent, um, underpinnings happening, a lot of racist ideas about black people's inferiority. So what, what, what ended up happening was that white Southerners literally showed a desire to heal the nation, right? They, they did. But what they wanted to do it by was by downplaying the horrors and of everything that happened, the horrors of enslavement. Actually, I haven't listened to it, but I think Sharon McMahon has a, has a podcast that came out this week where somebody that wrote a book about this entire kind of reconstruction period. Um, I, I want to go listen to that. I haven't listened to that. But the thing about the Confederate flags is they were actually a powerful symbol in reinterpreting, okay, the war of the rebellion. So, right. So now we got 1915, we got the box office hit. You guys know a birth of a nation. Okay. Where the central battle scene involves the key character, Ben Cameron of South Carolina, ramming the pole of a Confederate flag down a United States army cannon. And the very next shot is an injured Cameron rescued. Now again, Cameron is within Confederacy rescued from no man's land between the trenches of his longtime friend, Northerner and U S army commander, Phil. Now it, here's the thing. This, this movie, the second half of the movie, like cemented the theme of reconciliation, right? Like that's what the movie wanted to say. We're going to heal the nation with this movie. But what it did, it was reconciling white Southerners and white Northerners. Okay. Um, and so suddenly like the former enemies in North and South are united again. Listen, it's stated in a, a common defense of their Aryan birthright. And the movie even became a tool to recruit new members of the Ku Klux Klan. Now this movie, people may say, Carlos, like that's a movie from 1950. This was literally like the Avengers of that, that era, like the most popular movie ever. Okay. And it, it, it just used the Confederate flag for that Aryan resurgence. So then, you know, the Confederate flag, it's featured prominently in Gone with the Wind. Again, now we're in 1939. Okay. Now we're getting into the mid 1900s. 
Um, and of, again, we all know that that film glorified. I mean, they were the happiest slaves I've ever seen. You ever watch that movie? I haven't read the book, but I watched the movie. Uh, like they got some happy slaves. All them slaves are just happy. <laughs> it's not the way it was. Okay. Um, and again, it was a popular film and it glorified the way of life that white Southerners had um, during and immediately after slavery. Um and they used really a more visually striking Confederate battle flag there that Robert Lee, General Robert E. Lee had flown during the war. Um, and so suddenly the flag begins to change. Um, and like in this, just, I just remember, I remember we watched that movie in elementary school. Like I went to elementary school in Atlanta, Georgia. We had to watch that movie. Um, so then in the 1940s, a new political party of the Southerners, okay, that opposed Harry Truman and the Democratic Party's sympathetic stance on civil rights, they called themselves the Dixiecrats. And they adopted the Confederate battle flag. So now we're talking in the 40s, okay? You see how like as it gets closer to like our era, this flag is even more and more used as a weapon uh, and as a stance of racism. So the Dixiecrats adopted the Confederate battle flag as their party's emblem. From that point, the flag was clearly associated with racist opposition to civil rights, and from like government intrusion into the lives of individuals. When the civil rights activism was the most visible in the 50s and the 60s, many white Southerners became firmly attached to that flag. You know, and then we've got like the state of Georgia that has the, had the flag and like did, had a flag without the Confederate uh, flag on it, but then they put it on there. A few years later, 1961, neighboring state South Carolina became be, began to fly the Confederate flag above its capital. Okay. Then we got like in the year 2000 after protests, South Carolina moved the Confederate flag to the state house grounds. And then after Dylan Roof in the tragedy, the white supremacist um, endorsed the Confederate flag and murdered nine black churchgoers in 2015. That was when a lot of people realized, okay, this flag is a symbol of hate. Um, and then it started going away, right? And then it started going away. But here's the thing. In this polarized climate, again, a lot of Southerners will claim that the battle flag represents Southern heritage. But again, that's as if Southern heritage is simply comprised of like, you know, church going in NASCAR and like the beautiful things about the South. The problem with that claim is, again, the history of the use of the flag demonstrates, I mean, it's clear as day. I mean, just, we can all see it. The history of the use of the flag demonstrates that its heritage also symbolizes enslavement, inequality, violence, and injustice. So that's why, that's why it's offensive for those that don't know. If you can hear that, if you listen to that little monologue, and you still think, I just don't, I don't think it's offensive. Then I, I mean, I really, I can't, I can't, I can't do anything for you. Um, and we're, we'll, we'll, we'll just probably have to agree to disagree. Um, but if you can hear it from the heart of a black man that has, ooh, that, that flag elicits a guttural fear in me. Um, I ask you to trust me. So. Hearing that and knowing that a lot of people want um, to be able to have some of these conversations with their loved ones. Um, how in the world do you tell someone that you love or help someone that you love that is showing racist tendencies? How do you help them with that? Okay. Real quick. These are going to be fast. Then we're going to be done. First of all, I know that you when, when you have a conversation with either a friend or a family member that is maybe sympathetic towards racism, <laughs> um, what a nice way to say it. Sometimes our blood is boiling. And if we are too emotional, we're going to have some misguided options. Okay. Um, we're going to take some misguided steps. So just take a deep breath. First thing is if you embarrass somebody or you call them uninformed, or you lecture them, then there's a good chance they're going to feel as though they are already going to bounce. And that you're, whatever you say is going to fall on deaf ears. So rather than saying, you're a racist, okay, can we just not say that? 
Use I statements. Okay. Very important. Talk about how the comments that they're making are impacting you and how you're feeling about it. Okay. I really feel that really makes me uncomfortable when you say that. Do you you see how you're not making it about them? You're making it about you. So try your best. Use I statements. Those are vital when it comes to, to again, having these conversations with people um, that may be sympathetic, maybe accidentally racist. There's a lot of accidental racists out there. Um, Fix my tens unit again. Don't worry about me guys. Just healing my back. Um, so use I statements, big, 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 big piece. Um, that, that, that's, that's really important. So make sure that you're pulling it back to you. Okay. The second thing that you want to do is you want to clarify their stance. Okay. Say it together with me. Clarify their stance. Do you say it? Clarify their stance. Okay. One of the, one of the biggest ways that you can actually get into like an actual argument with them is mishearing or misunderstanding their point of view. So, you know, if you've been shocked by what you think is like a racist outburst, it could be worth getting them to articulate, articulate on their perspective. Okay. Because let's be honest, how many times, at least with my wife, have I heard her say something and gone all in on defense mode with what she said, but I heard her wrong. That's actually not what she meant. Okay. Um, Sometimes what we say and what we hear are two different things. So somebody might say something and have a different intent and not realize what the impact is going to be. So step number one, use I statements. I feel like that's making me feel okay. Not you second, clarify their stance, say it back to them. Okay. So what you're saying is you don't think America's racist because we've had a black president. Is that, is, is that what you're saying? You see, I'm clarifying a statement. Okay. Now th- this is, uh, this next step is going to be hard for a lot of us. Okay. Talk to them quietly. Talk to them quietly. That people that are talked to loudly feel accosted. So this may feel like the simplest thing ever, but I, when I'm talking to people um, and emotions are rising and I see their emotions rising, I actually lower my voice and I talk quieter. This is a strategy that like um, police officers like that are dealing with hostages do, they talk quietly. Okay. So lower it down. Number four, let them walk in someone else's shoes. So like, instead of spouting out facts and figures, that's just the worst thing you can do. Don't throw out data. Nobody wants your PowerPoint presentation. So instead of spouting out facts and figures to back up your point, okay. One of the things that I love to do is ask them to imagine what things are like for certain groups. Because what what happens is, is this is the empathy piece. One of the questions that I think is very important to ask is, um, and this is such a, a great empathetic same is when's the last time you thought about your race? When's the last time you thought about being white? Like, honestly, ask that. Like, when's the last time you thought about being white? For a lot of, now some people think about it more often, but for most people that are white and don't have empathy towards anyone struggling through a racist situation, they, they, they don't because they don't have to. Whereas I think about my blackness, honestly, every single day in different situations and circumstances. Empathy. Okay. Um, If ask them this, if this was happening to you, what would you do? Okay. What would you do? I mean, would you do whatever you could to make sure that your children were safe? Absolutely. Okay. Um, So let them walk, help them to walk in someone else's shoes. I mean, you might be able to say, I'm going to challenge your perceptions by telling you a story. Someone told me about their experiences as a blank. So again, help them. Number five, be careful that you're not being too aggressive. This goes back to lowering your voice. Okay. As passionate as you are, if you start lecturing in an aggressive way, 
people aren't going to be receptive. So if you're generally offended, just make sure you frame it along the lines of, so like if you get offended, like I, I, I'm upset when you say things like, again, make it not about who they are, but about what they've done. I still am the, of the belief that like people aren't racist, but their actions are. So God, racist is such a trigger word, right? It's, it's become a, um, an insult, of course, but I, 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 if we stop labeling people as racist and labeling their actions as racist instead, I think it helps. And then listen, here's a big one. I'm, this is last but not least actually listen to their perspective to understand like as horrible as their point of views might be. If you don't give people the respect of listening to their views, there's honestly little chance that they're going to do the same for you. Literally. Listen, there's new research that suggests that 61% of conservatives and 64% of liberals prefer to read arguments they already agree with, which means that a lot of arguments fall on deaf ears on both sides of the political fence. Now in this, um, uh, in this research study, it says that participants said that hearing from the other side felt horrible. They reported it was about as unpleasant as taking out the trash or standing in line for 20 minutes. Okay, this is psychology researchers from the University of Winnipeg. That's amazing. Taking out the trash. I would rather take out the trash or stand in line for 20 minutes than talk to somebody that I disagree with their point of view. Um, but here's the thing. If opponents feel understood, they might be more receptive to hearing what other people have to say. So again, listening to the other side could at least help prepare you for those deeper conversations. But a lot of times, like I'll just, um, like there's a friend of mine that honestly, he wants to talk about this stuff all the time. He wants to talk, talk about politics all the time. Um, I, I mean, honestly, like a lot of the time, like that's kind of where the conversation wants to go. And I just, I just let him talk and I just listen. And I don't, I don't actually have like counter arguments. I'm not trying to like have, have those conversations, but I am excited about listening because it, it helps me understand where he's coming from. Um, and, and then I ask him, well, where did you like, how did you get there? And th I mean, that, that's a great question to ask as well, because a lot of times people, most of the time people believe what they believe because of a true experience that they've had in their life. Listen to understand, not to reply. Um, and I'll, I'll just add one more thing. Don't, don't try to, don't try to change people's mind in a comment, comment section. It ain't going to work. Never has, never will. Um, oops, we're at 52 minutes. I don't know where you were driving, but hopefully it took you 52 minutes. Um, that was fun. I don't know. That feels, that feels like it was, it was useful. What do you guys think? Like I, I, I did, I actually, I did a lot of research today, um, kind of grabbing these things, man, I have one more. I'm, oh man, just, I got some talking points. Maybe I'm going to put these in the, um, in the show notes. I've got some talking points as well. I'm going to put in the show notes, but that's, that's it. There it is today. I don't even know what we're going to title this. Can you tell me what I ended up titling this? I don't know what we're going to title it. Like, like why the Confederate flag is offensive and six ways to, tell your grandpa that they're racist without hurting their feelings. I don't know. I don't know what we're going to take it, but I do know one thing. We got Dr. Light coming in. Here we go. Hey, well, I'm listening to you. I, I I'm listening to you. I am going to bring back guests that you love. I'm going to teach some more. Hang on. You ready for this? Come on. And, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm listening if you go to carloswitaker.com slash podcast, you can still fill out that survey. You can't win any more Amazon bucks, but you can listen to the survey. Also, um, in the show notes, the survey will be there as well. Thank you so much for this. Thank you for all of your, um, just how much you care, because it means a lot to me. All right, y'all know the routine. Please, please, please follow the show on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe on Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcast. Share it and review it. Give me them, give me them five stars. This was a five-star episode, I think. Um, 
Yeah. And I kind of like doing it live. I kind of liked uh, it's just one take. Bam. We're, we're shooting the whole thing. Never going to stop the camera. Never going to stop recording. It is what it is. Family, next week's episode 98. And I'll see you back. Break it down for me, brother. Now, oh. Put the needle on the record and the drum beat goes like this.